And the deputy's going to be behind you. You're just going to start in the box, okay? Could you raise your, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, can you raise your right hand? Can you swear or affirm the testimony about the damage? Is it true? So I'll help you I do. All right. Um, you can be seated. Um, Ms. Smith, would you like to question her? I would. Um, for the record, can you start by stating your name, please? Oh, sure. Yeah, you can post it. Let's see what it was like. Hi. Can Hi. you start by stating your name? It's Jennifer Crumbly. And Mrs. Crumbly, um, you and I have been working together since... November, or I'm sorry, December of 2021, correct? Correct. And is it fair to say that over these last 26 months, we've discussed whether or not you intended to testify a number of times? We have. Do you, um, do you want to testify in your case? Yes. Do you understand that if you did not testify, this judge, this court, would give the jury instructions that it cannot be held against you? Yes. Do you understand that after I question you, the prosecution is going to be able to cross-examine you? Yes. And do you understand they're going to be able to cross-examine you about all of the evidence that's been admitted in the case, including all of your text messages to, or your Facebook messages to your husband, all of those messages with Mr. Maloche, all the evidence in the case, yes, correct? Yes, I do. They get full reign on cross-examination. We've gone over that, is that correct? Correct. And do you have any questions for myself or for Judge Matthews about testifying? Uh, no, I don't. Is it your, are you doing this because anyone has threatened you or coerced you into testifying? No. Is this your choice? Yes. Is it voluntary, free, um, freely made by you? Yes. Um, is there anything you think the court should know about, about this decision? Uh, no. Okay. Does, do you have any questions for me, Mrs. Palmer? I do not. Okay. All right. Should we address counsel's motion while the jury's out? Um, well, she, well, I guess she's, she mentioned that maybe we can do it later. We can reserve it. Okay. I'll leave okay. it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. So, um, are you ready for the jury? I am. Okay. Um, you need to take a break for, for any reason, um, let me know. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, Judge, we still have to inquire if counsel has any other defense witnesses after Mrs. Crumble. I'm not sure. It depends on child care. So who would that person be? I'm not sure. I They have never told me who they were calling. I'm not sure. Like, I thought they told you the night before. Yeah, I'll tell them tonight. I just need, I haven't, I've been in court with Mrs. Crumbly all day, so I don't know who I'm calling next. Okay, it, I think, I guess it's going to be hard to believe that we're going to get past her. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Do you think we will? I don't know. It depends how long the cross is. I believe I'll get through her. All right, for the jury. <coughs> I do. All right, thank you. Would you state the name for the record? It's the first and last name. It's Jennifer Crumbly, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-C-R-U-M-B-L-E-Y. Go ahead, Ms. Smith. You know, Your Honor, I'm going to hold the podium up just so I can see a little bit better. Okay, sure. I just need to get, is there any way we could put the screen on? Sure. Usually that one goes on fast, so. 
And what I'm going to have to do is, um, I'm going to leave this unplugged for a moment so that when I need an exhibit, I'll just plug it in. Okay. Because I, I don't have those fancy, like, in between slides. This one, take, this one goes on in the middle. Well, they don't all go on simultaneously. They don't, okay. Let's see if it goes. I guess I feel like I'm the only one who can see all three of them. <coughs> this one is not on. Oh, there, all okay. three of them are on. Let's see what happens when I just go like, okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pull it out each time. So I, I apologize in between witness in between exhibits. Um, so with that, I'm gonna pull it out. Okay. All right, Mrs. Crumbly. Can you please start by identifying yourself? Tell the jury who you are. Uh, my name is Jennifer Crumbly, and I'm the defendant in this okay. case. And how old are you? I'm 45. Mrs. Crumbly, can you? I. The jury has heard so much testimony. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. If there's, I'm going to go a little bit faster through things. And if there's something we need to explain, um, or if I'm cutting you off, let me know. Okay. Okay. And you understand that as I speak, you have to wait for me to finish speaking. Correct. Okay. So, Mrs. Crumbly, very briefly, go ahead and tell the jury what you did for a living. I was a marketing director at our real estate acquisition company. And how long did you hold that position? Five years. Now, does that kind of position include any kind of presentations or public speaking, anything like that? Not a lot. Okay. And how do you feel right now about talking to this jury? Um, public speaking is probably my biggest fear, so very nervous. Okay. And um, at times, um, you have been upset during this trial, is that correct? Correct. Um, are you okay to keep proceeding? Yes. Um, I want you to tell this jury just a little bit about about your personality, and I think we've seen some of it on the videos. Is that fair to say? You have. Okay, let's talk about when you have a really stressful situation. What is your, like let's say an animal dies in your family or a person dies in your family, how do you, how do you handle something like that, news like that? Um, I go into a go planning mode. Um, I internalize things, and my reaction is to take care of other things that may have to be taken care of, like um, financials or things that keep the house running. Um, I just I tend to hold things in, and I let it out when I'm alone. So having a lot of emotions for me is, is difficult. Now, in this case... Um Aside from this case, is that true in other situations of your life? Yeah. Um, Can you give the jury like an example? Yeah, my um, my husband had a hard time holding down a job after his mother passed away. Um, so when he would lose a job, I would actually be the one finding the ones for him and sending them from Indeed or Monster and taking taking plans of how we're going to put certain things on payments. Um, it's just I take control of things. That's just what I do. Okay. And you, um, I want to talk to you. You mentioned your husband. How, when did you and James Crumbly meet? Um, in October of 2004. And how long have you been together then? It will be 18 years this September. And are you still together and married at this time? We are. Have you spoken to him recently? No. How long has it been since you've spoken to him? A little over two years. So since the day of the shooting? Correct. Or not shooting, the day yes. you were arrested? Correct. You have a son? Yes. The jury's heard a lot about your son. Okay. I want to talk about your son prior to November 30th, okay? Okay. Tell the jury how old he was at that time. He was 15 years old. And tell, give the jury an idea of about what kinds of things he was into, what his hobbies included, Oh, he was really into bowling. He was actually really good at it. Um, he was into metal detecting. Um, he was into, What do you mean by metal detecting? He would um, we have a metal detector, so we would go to the beach, or we went to Florida out by the ocean or the, the neighbor's yard. They weren't there anymore, so we'd go in the neighbor's yard and see if we could find old, old coins or cans or whatever he would find, but he really liked that. Um, he was into 
uh, his BB guns and target practice. We had a half acre um, of land in the village of Oxford that went straight back. So in the backyard, we set up little targets that we got from Amazon that you can just kind of shoot down, like little whatever. Um, see, he was into he was into his video games. Um, he did soccer from age three until ninth grade. He was a, he had a lot of different a lot of different interests. Coin collecting. Do you have some interests? I do. Okay, we've heard about horses. I like horses. Um, I also snow ski. Um, I'm a big reader, and I worked a lot, so I didn't have a lot of time to do the reading. But okay, now when you say snow skiing, did you ever work? Oh. Back up. Were there any activities that you and Ethan enjoyed doing together? Yes. Um, I joined the ski patrol because the family can ski free, um, also to help people out. So I got him into skiing at the age of seven. And he would come out to, with me on my patrol shifts and come skiing with me. So we were in that together. What about horses? Did he ever go out to the barn with you? He did. Um, but he didn't really like horses. The one horse I had was kind of aggressive, so it intimidated him. It kind of turned him off from going to the barn. It's kind of boring if you're not the person with the horse. There's a lot of standing around and a lot of nothing. Okay. So what, would you spend time together with him at home? Yeah. <coughs> okay, tell the jury what kinds of things you guys did as, together or as a family. Um, we did a lot of board games. Uh, we also had the um, virtual reality set for the PS4, so we did a lot of the Beat Saber. You can probably Google I that. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's, a, um, it's like you're holding lightsabers and it has music, and you have to like hit the beats, but it's all in 3D, so it's a virtual reality headset. Okay, so um, you would do that with him? Yeah. Okay, what um, else? We had a pool. We liked swimming together. Um, I mean, really just normal stuff. Okay, did you do holiday things? We did. Give us some examples. Um, so every year for around uh, Thanksgiving, I always cook Thanksgiving dinner. Um, the day after, we would go cut our Christmas tree down. And then um, we would decorate that weekend. We would watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Um, Halloween, we grew our own pumpkins. Um, so we always carved and carved our own pumpkins and had a whole bunch put around the house. Um, Easter, we just, you know, it's normal, normal family stuff. Did you have um, an interest in like home improvement kind of stuff? Yeah, um, our house was an auction house. Um, so basically it was wrapped in blue tarp when we bought it at auction. So we've been trying to improve the house since 2015. Um, so we new roof, um, exterior, exterior, and then we, I've been working on exterior and interior ever since. Um, were there things that um, your son was interested in outside of video games? Was there anything academic that he was interested in? He really liked history. He was a big history buff. Um, we can play Trivial Pursuit, and he would get me in history every single time. Um, but that, that's probably his, that was probably his only favorite subject. The rest he could do without. How did he do in school? He did good if he applied himself. Um, his problem was... He didn't try as hard as I think he could, so he was, he had, he had up and down grades. I would say it's about average. Okay, and when you say about average, um, was that something that you talked to him about? Was that something you monitored? Tell the jury about that. Yeah, um, you heard about the Power School app t during this trial, so I had it on my phone, and I was on it multiple times a day, and his, his grades would fluctuate based on what assignments the teachers turned in on the Power School app. Our biggest struggle with him were missing assignments. That was the one thing we battled all the time. Why was that a hot button issue for you? Because there's no reason why he should have missing assignments. He had a homeroom class and get assignments and done in. Okay. Um, there were, um, you talked about your job. What were the average hours you worked a week? Um, I usually worked, I got to the office from 7 and 8 in the morning and leave anywhere between 4 and 6. And we've heard lots of evidence already. It was family friendly. Yeah. Were you able to go and leave and go as you needed to? Pretty much, yep. Okay. Um, did you care about your job? I did a lot. Okay. Explain, um, did you have any changes in positions over the year or year and a half, two years before this? I did. Um, when I first started with the company, I was hired in as a social media coordinator. Um, I stayed in that role until about 2020. I got promoted to director of marketing. Um, and that, I held the position until I, I was terminated. 
Okay. And you were, um, did you work during COVID? I did. I worked remotely for about six months during COVID. Then I went back to the office in, I believe it was August of 2020. Okay. Did you enjoy work? I did. It was fun. It was, um, marketing, it's exciting, and I like doing graphic design. Um, I did. I really liked my job. Now, the jury already heard about Brian. Brian testified. Correct. Um, tell the jury about Brian. Um, well, I've known him since high school. We've been friends since then. Um, you know, uh, he's part of the horse community. He has horses. And um, as you heard yesterday, we did have an extramarital affair. That's probably the extent of our... But, yeah. but we, were, we were good friends, too. How often would, in terms of the affair, how often would you spend time together with Brian during 2021? Maybe an average of once a week. Okay. How once. long did how long did the affair last over? Uh, about six months. Do you feel like that affair caused you to neglect Ethan or not spend time with him? I'm sorry, your son, in any way? No. Explain why why you don't feel that's the case. Because when I met with Brian, it was in the mornings. Um, on his way home from the station, he would pass my work, and so. At the time I was coming to work, we'd meet at the Costco parking lot, and that was it. He'd go out about his day, I'd go about mine. And is it fair to say that you lied to keep that affair going? Yes, I did. And what, I apologize if I, I asked this, I might have, I just am not writing notes. Did you say the, when that, the date range that that started? It was around spring of 2021. Okay. And did... As far as you knew, did you ever talk to that to your son about that? No. And did you ever talk to your husband about it? No. If anything, you lied lied to him about what you were doing, or lied by omission, not telling him. No. Yeah. That, 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 as far as I knew, I was going to work in the morning. That was yeah. okay. Um, outside of those morning times, how many other times would you say you and Brian got together? It was two or three. Um, I went on some business trips where I would stay overnight, and he would meet me. He would meet me at the hotel. So that happened two or three times. Two or three times. Were there other business trips you took where he did not meet you? Yeah, there was quite a few. Um, when Christy Gibson Marshall testified, do you remember who she was? I do. Who was she? She was the assistant vice principal. And she she commented she knew Ethan in elementary or she knew your son in elementary school, correct? Correct. And she said she testified obviously already about recognizing him. Did that surprise you? No. She also mentioned something about emails with you. Do you recall having email <coughs> exchanges with her? There is one with uh, regarding his report card. Um, getting additional help and, and math. Was there any time at that point or into high school that you ever had to email with teachers about discipline issues? Not discipline, no. How often would you email about missing assignments or grade type issues? That was a regular, regular thing. Okay, and you said you monitored power schools every day. Approximately how many times a month would you say you t went to the teachers, or was it weekly? I don't know. It would be, um, I'm not say it was on a regular basis, but when it happened, it was a series of messages. Um, he'd be struggling in geometry, and so me and the teacher would message back and forth quite a bit, and then he started getting better, and it was die off. So it, it, was, it was sporadic, but it was a lot when it happened. Now, um, we saw pictures of your house. How did you feel about seeing those pictures? Horrible. Okay, why is that? Because um, my son has a very messy room, and it was right after Thanksgiving, like right after Thanksgiving, and we hosted Thanksgiving, and um, it was pretty messy. It was kind of embarrassing. Okay. Really embarrassing. Explain the two-bedroom thing, or what was going on with that? Um, so, Ethan, sorry, my son, um, he had one bedroom, and it got out of control. And every time I go to clean it, I just shut the door. I just didn't want to deal with it. So then I told him he could just use the guest bedroom until I could get his room to get cleaned. 
Um, the day before Thanksgiving, I was deep cleaning because we have people over every Thanksgiving, and my intention was to clean both rooms, but I caught my oven on fire in the self-clean mode. So instead of, I had the fire department out and everything. Um, so instead of getting his rooms clean, I'm just scraping out the black charcoal stuff inside your oven so I could cook dinner the next day. Um, but yeah, he was in a second bedroom because I just, I didn't want to clean his room anymore. It was just, it was enough. Did you have any plans um, to do anything with all that stuff? Yeah, um, we are going through a lot of stuff because he outgrew a lot of the clothes and the shoes. There's a lot of toy-like things that he doesn't use anymore, so we're just going to pack it up and donate it. Okay, and when were you planning to do that? Between Thanksgiving and Christmas before he got new stuff. Now, we saw a video, um, I guess I want to talk to you about, there's one friend in particular you, your son spent a lot of time with, correct? Correct. Okay, we're not going to say his name, but let's just refer to him as the friend. Okay. Okay? Overall, was that his, your, was that your son's only friend? That was his only friend that came over. He did have friends that he talked to during school, but that was the only one that he spent time with outside of school. And how often would you say he came over? Oh, he used to walk home with them every day um, from school. The summertime, he'd, come camp he'd go on camping trips with us. Sometimes he would spend more than a week with us. He, he, he called him my second son. Okay, he was the second son. Did you know he was going to be moving away at any point? N not that abruptly, no. Okay, so when he moved away, is it fair to say it was a surprise to you and your son? It was. <clears throat> Um, what kinds of things would the would the boys do together at your house? Oh, they go down to the lake and go fishing. Um, they would walk to Little, Little Caesars or Frosty Boy. Um, they go in the backyard, shoot the BBs. They go swimming in the pool. We took them bowling a lot. They just they did they played video games. Now, when you so when you had him over at the house. Or I guess, was it, was it more common for him to be at your house or for your son to be at, at his friend's house? My son has never been to his house. Okay, why, why is that? Um, because he had OCD, not my son, the, his friend had OCD issues and he didn't want other people in the house. At your house, did, did that friend exhibit any issues? No, not at all. Okay, so were you surprised when he, when he moved? Yeah, very surprised. Um, we saw evidence that you had Life360 on your phone, and it was on James's phone, right? Correct. Can you tell the jury what Life360 is, what the point of it is, why it's on the phone? It, um, it's a family tracking app, so you know where people are at. Uh, my, my husband's mother-in-law got sick in the middle of April, and instead of me worrying about where he was while he was down in Florida with his mother and I was up here, we just installed the app on his phone so I knew if he was at the hospital or if I knew he was at his dad's house. So just that way at the bottom, I'm always worried about, worried about him and places he goes. So it was just one thing that eased my mind a little bit. Do you, um, is that something you frequently text, uh, message your husband, where are you, where are you, where are you? Mm-hmm, a lot. Okay. so. The jury's going to see the entire stack of exhibits. If they go through all of your messages, how often a week would you say you're on top of him about where he is? Daily. What about your son? Were you worried, ever worried about where he was? I mean, not during the day. He was at school. If he didn't get home from school at the time he was supposed to, I would worry about him. Okay. And um, did you ever ask James about him in your in messages? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the prosecution uh, introduced evidence that makes it sound like you and James only talk about these horses. Yeah, I should have formed the question, makes it sound, and this is direct exam at cross, so this should be not any question. Okay. So. Um, how, often, how often would you say you discuss your horses versus your son when you're messaging each other? A lot more than I, a lot more with the horses. Why is that? Um, because my horses, at least, were accident prone, um, and my husband didn't know a lot about horses. They were more my thing. With him working from home, a lot of times I'd have him go out and check on them, tell him what to do. Um, he started getting into them. He had questions. I knew my son was at school. I knew where he was at during the day. I can talk to him after school. Horses can't talk, so if something's wrong, we've got to kind of figure it out. But yeah, we talked a lot about horses. 
Would you, is it fair to say that, did you have additional conversations with James about courses and or Ethan? Yeah. How often would you and James talk about or talk to Ethan? Well, talk to him every day. Um, talk about him probably every day too. Okay. What kind of, did Ethan have scheduling things you had to work out? Yeah, he, um, he had bowling practices throughout the week, bowling matches, and he worked part-time at a diner. So we had to, we had to work out transportation and scheduling with that. Um, in terms of your relationship with your son, how did you think your relationship was? I thought we were pretty close. Um, we would talk. We would, I mean, we did a lot of things together. Um, I trusted him. And I felt like I had an open door and he can come to me about anything. I mean, I felt, I felt as a family, we were, we were, the three of us were really close. Okay, you're getting a lot of, no, it's okay. You're getting a lot of redness here. Is that normal? Um, yes, because I'm talking in front of people and my nerves act up. So I get splotchy and I might break out in hives and I apologize. Okay, but you are okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Um, so with regard to, to your son, did you ever go through his text messages, go through his bedroom? Um, what kind of a parent were you in terms of going through those things? I did not go through his text messages. Um, I didn't have a reason to. His bedroom, I would go through when I clean it. When I come across things, I look through it to see if it was something I needed to keep or throw away. Um, but I never went through his text messages. What about, you did say you went through his grades. Correct. Um, did you end up having discipline issues with him? A couple of times we did, yes. What kind of things would those be over? Uh, missing assignments in his grades. Okay. Well, any, any other things that were discipline issues? No. At school or at home? No. <clears throat> Was there ever a time where you took away your son's phone? Yes. Okay, do you recall when that was? Um, I don't remember exactly. I just know um, he got really angry about it. But we took him away a couple of times. Uh, we've taken his video games away. Um, Why did you do that? Missing assignments in his grades. Okay, so same stuff. Same stuff. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about some of the text messages. Um, and you would agree, the prosecution admitted some text messages about one of those times when you took away his phone. Correct. Okay, so we'll get there, okay? Um, I want to talk about mental health. Did you ever believe that your son needed mental health treatment, therapy, counseling, anything? No, I mean, there's a couple of times where Ethan had expressed anxiety over taking tests, um, anxiety about what he was going to do after high school, whether it was college, uh, military. So he expressed those, those concerns to me, um, but not, not to a level where I felt he needed to go see a, a psychiatrist or a mental health professional right away, no. Did you ever deny him or say, no, I'm not going to take you to a mental health professional? Did he ever ask you? No, I mean, he, one time um, when he was talking about what he wanted to do for, the, for his future, I don't know, he just, he was feeling really down about it and stressed. Um, we did, we did, my husband did call his school counselor to try to talk to him because they do a lot of future academic planning with the tech school. Um, was that a mental health issue? No, it was more or less addressing what was upsetting my son at that time. Okay, and what was the, what was upsetting him? The fact that he didn't know what he wanted to do. His grades weren't that great, so he was stressed out about getting into college. Um, he just he was just having a hard time with his future goals. Was there ever a time he was considering military? He talked about it, yes. Okay. Any other things that he talked about? Um, he wanted to be he wanted to go into video he wanted to design video games. Um, he wanted to own his own own car shop, like not be the mechanic, but own the shop that mechanics worked at. But that was about, that was about it. Okay. Um, were there other kinds of health um, treatments you, you did get for him? Like, did you take him to the doctor? Yeah. How often or for what? 
Um, when he got sick, if it was obviously, uh, well, during COVID, it was different because every little thing I freaked out about. So we'd take him to get a COVID test or take him to the doctors. Um, but growing up, it would just be if he had a headache that persisted for quite a, for longer than a week. Um, but most things are not, nothing serious. Did you, was, did he have insurance? Did you have insurance coverage on your son? My husband did. Okay, always, or were there times where you didn't? All the way up through October of 2021 when my husband lost his job. And I was gonna add him on to my health insurance in November of 2021 at the end of the enrollment period. That was the only time that insurance lasts with him. Was that one of the outstanding things going on on the day that all of this unfolded? It was. Despite, um, in addition to physically going to the doctor, did you have access to some kind of virtual plan? Yeah, through my company. It's called Allied Health Network. It's a virtual, it's a virtual doctor's visit. Um, and actually, the, the prescriptions were free, too. They didn't cost anything. So we use that. If he had strep throat, you can take a picture of the throat, send it to the doctor, and they can, they can treat it from there. Were there times that you called that, uh, did virtual visits regarding your son? Yeah. And were there times, did you ever go to an urgent care or anything like that? Yep. For what kinds of things? Um, well, usually for sports physicals, but if he had a really, if he was younger and had a really high fever and his regular doctor couldn't get him in, we'd take him to urgent care. He's never had an injury or anything, so mainly okay. just that. Was there ever a time that he had an issue with a mole on his back? Yeah, he had um, a mole in the middle of his back. And when I was putting sunscreen on him, I noticed it changed color. So I made an appointment for the doctor to take him in to take a look at that. Now that was when he was much younger, correct? He was about seven, I believe. You mentioned something about headaches for a week. Uh, you took him to the doctor. Was there a time where he had a headache issue? Yeah, he was getting really bad headaches that we couldn't figure out what it was. Um, when was that? Started started young, probably around five, five years old, and he kept complaining. Um, the doctor didn't really see anything. Uh, we even got an x-ray of his head to see if there was any bumps. Well, I'm just going to check his irrelevance when he's five or six years old. I just I was asking I didn't know when it was I was just asking if she got a medical but it's appearance. gone on through the years it, it, okay okay. And, okay go ahead um, okay. so then we found out that he needed glasses so around eight or nine we got him glasses and that didn't work um, he went into, we he got X-rays done for dental in middle school we found out he had a severe underbite which was causing tension in the back of his neck so we got him braces in. Mm -hmm eighth grade and once he had his braces that seemed to fix the headaches okay now with the braces was that was that an easy process no why not because he's horrible at brushing his teeth um he went he went use the water pick we got him um he went brush properly he would constantly get cavities in his braces so we ended up taking the wires out because one time he had 13 cavities under the braces and we're prior, trying. I'm sorry. Prior to him getting braces, did he ever have cavities? Um. Yeah, he had a few. Okay, but it, did the braces? Was it more after the braces? Yeah, because he wasn't brushing properly around his braces, so there he was getting them under, and we had to get the wires removed and take them to get those filled until we could get the wire put back on. Okay, so it was like an off and on procedure. Yeah. Okay. Um. I want to go through some exhibits for you that, with you, that the defense has proposed as exhibits A, I'm sorry, B through XX, and I'm going to ask, I wanted to add one more on as YY. Judge, the uh, counsel's proposed a number of exhibits from, appear to be from Facebook, not from a subright extraction, but from Facebook. Some predate the incident by years. So, as far as relevance, Judge, I don't mind any exhibits around the date of the offense or even the relevant time periods, spring of 2021. But prior to that, it doesn't appear to be relevant. Your Honor, the, the, they have the specific pictures I was using since October. The specific pictures, isolated, not all the pictures, but specific pictures I was using, they never filed a motion to exclude any of those. Okay, well, they don't, they, they don't, they don't. 
Okay, so we'll go exhibit by exhibit. I haven't seen any of the exhibits, so they're, they obviously will be pretty different. Right? Okay, can I, Your Honor, would you like me to bring you with the hard copy, and then when the, if the exhibit's okay, we can put it on the screen? Yeah, I can submit it. We'll put it on the screen. Okay, yeah. and um, I did them just... They have, a copy, have three copies of all these. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them, so. And we've, um, I've actually had them redacted and then sent the redacted version to cut out the faces of any minors. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to bring the court um, what's been marked as B through, this is YY if it's admitted, B through YY. Okay. May I approach? Sure. Okay. Now B is um, I now I have a, a little bit of a problem because I was going to have my client hold those so I don't put them on the screen because I, I I don't know which ones if any the prosecution will stipulate to. Um, so I can I can use them. Okay. So the first exhibit proposed exhibit is B. It's, um, it's several, yeah, it's several pages. Um, it shows thumbnails throughout the years so the jury can see the variety of things posted on because the prosecution introduced text messages. How many pages is B? I believe it's 14. They're just like um, thumbnails. I'm not going to go through each thumbnail either. Just wondering, where does the second one start? It's C, Exhibit C. Exhibit C would be the next exhibit. Okay, do you recognize what, what the court has just handed you? Yes. Okay, what what is in Exhibit B? What does it appear to be? Um, these are pictures I've posted on Facebook. Okay, and there's a lot, lot, lot of them. Is there's, that a fair statement? Yes. Okay. Are those, um, those are all the pictures you posted on Facebook? Are, they're not from any, they're from the whole period, correct? Well, what means the period? Well, when did those start and, and go through? Um, I would say mainly 2000. Twenty. On that copy, there's I'm just, no dates on my I don't think there's any dates. I can, I can tell by the... Looks like from 2020 to 2021. Now, those, do you post on Facebook a lot? I do. Like way too much? I do. Okay, so I am not gonna go through every Facebook post you've made. You understand that, right? Yeah. Okay, would, would this exhibit give the jury an idea of what you post about generally if they just took a look at the variety of pictures? Yes. I have to object to relevance. Again, it's from the time period that's relevant, I have no objection to these coming in. But even the defendant doesn't know with specificity when these were taken. She says and they start in 2020. She thinks. No, I know. And there's, there's, no, there's no dates on there. Yeah, you'll have your turn. There's no dates on there. And um, if it's from the spring of 21 on to the shooting event, that's fine. Your Honor, the, the prosecution has made it okay, sound okay, like... Okay, okay. Well, you're you specifically asked that you guys not talk at the same time. Sorry, yeah. I did. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah. So B appears to be a thumbnail version of pictures. The rest of the exhibits are pictures with dates next to them. Okay. And that might be the best way to go through which ones are from the right date and which ones aren't. Okay, well, date-wise, um, this happened um, November 30th, 2021. That's right. And, um, Things have been put into evidence with regard um, to the defendant and the shooter um, as early as April of 2020. March. March. Okay, so. Yep. Your Honor, I believe they've gone back longer <coughs> in terms of some of the testimony that's come out. Well, I guess I was going to say that. So I, I don't think that the, the pictures starting in 2020 are, are that remote. I, I don't know if there's any. I, I don't know if there's anything amongst those pictures that is uh, particularly problematic. It's hard to look at them all, but the time frame in and of itself, I think, is appropriate. Well, there are some, just so the court's <coughs> aware, there's 20, post from 20, 
2017, 2019. Those are in the those are in the those are in the following ones where I did picture by picture. So those those will go through after this exhibit. This exhibit B um, is 2020 and 2021. Okay, so just with regard to the time frame itself, I think the time frame uh, is close enough in time. So um, I'm, I'm going to overrule an objection okay. with regard to the mission of those pictures just based on the time frame. All right. But I, you know, the, there's a lot of little pictures, so I, you know, I don't know if any. any no, that's fine. We can go that. exhibit by exhibit. I'm sorry? I said we can go exhibit by exhibit. Okay. Yeah, the, pic the pictures in 2020, the pictures in Defendant's Exhibit B are yeah. small, so. The exhibit contains a lot of little pictures, so I haven't right. looked at those. I assume the prosecution has, so I don't know if yes, any sir. pictures are objectionable with, with regard to the individual pictures. So, yeah. just it's the it's the relevant dates was the objection. Okay. Okay. So, Mrs. Crumbly, the jury <coughs> is going to get these if they want to sit and look at all. Of them. Okay. I don't want to go through all of them. There ends up being pages and pages. What are all of these? Um, the ones that are on the screen right now is Christmas of 2020 with the two white dogs and us posing in front of the Christmas tree. I'm just trying to get like an over idea of topics that uh, are in the um, photos. Animals, uh, us going on vacations at the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes, um, Leelanau, camping, holidays, more camping, horses, garden, my home, my home stuff. Cooking, more camping pictures. Um, we got a bathroom remodel. Another Christmas picture. Okay, and so these pictures um, give an idea of the variety of things you posted. Yes. Okay. So if your Facebook messages appear to have more discussion of courses, um, how would you characterize the amount of horses on Facebook compared to the rest of your life? Over the last couple years more, um, it was hard getting a picture of my son when he's, as he got older. He didn't like me taking pictures of him. But yeah, over between 2020 up until 20 and the 21, um, there was a lot of pictures of horses. Okay, I'm gonna unplug this um, and move to exhibit C. Um, I, oh, you want me to get this, too, right? this goes back to 2019. I just put like one or two pictures from that year um, as exhibit C. C well, C and D. And so if the court just wants to let me know what. C, okay, so C and D, she's a Yes. What's in C? What's the date of it? Um, it is June 26, 2019. Okay. And and um, what is that? What is it a picture of? It's a picture of my son holding his chinchilla. Okay. And then what about um, picture? Uh, let's see here. D. Do you need the date? Yeah. What's the date? It's August 9th, 2019. Okay. And what's the picture of? Um, my son petting our horse. Okay. Um, you know, Judge, it's, it's fine. I don't have any problem with it. Okay, so you hear a minute? Yeah, the rest of them. The rest of them? Yep. Okay, okay. okay. thank you. Okay, so... Um, okay, you're talk, you, then you need to be talking about E through... I, I, I don't know if it's just pictures or some others. This goes to XX, so... I would, and I'm sorry, it should, go to, it should go to YY because I added on just one more. So may I approach Mrs. Crumbly just to give her why why? Okay, do you want me to give these to Paul to her? Yes, and then okay. we'll just go through each one. Do you agree with all these exhibits or just again? Yes, we just need the dates identified. That's all. We'll okay. put those on the record. Well, I'm, I'm not going to hand them to her if I need to look at them first. So. I think they're not objecting to any of them, are they? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. So, Mrs. Crumbly, the jury's going to have access to these, so let's just go through them. Um, we are going to identify the dates for the record, though, okay? okay. So, going to exhibit, um, let's see here, this is uh, C. What's the date on C? That's June 26, 2019. And what is that? That's uh, my son with his chinchilla. Okay. Now, I'm going to go down to D. What's the date on that one? Um, that one's August 9, 2019. Okay, and what's going on in there? Um, that's my son with our horse. Okay, I'm going to go to E. 
Um, that's his first day of eighth grade. That's August 26, 2019. Okay. And um, it's fair to say that I just picked out, hey, these are not all your posts, no. right? I don't, don't want to keep ejected, but the form of the question has to be appropriate. Fair to say, this is okay. a direct example. I'm right. asking a really stupid question, but I'll ask, a, I'll ask it in a better way. Am I showing every photo from your Facebook page? No. Um, you post more, or how about, do you post more photos than what we see? A lot more. Okay. We're not going to go through all of them, though. No. Okay. So this is the first day of what? I'm sorry, last day of? It's the last day of middle school. It's the first day of eighth grade. Okay. I'm going to go down to F. What's been admitted is F. What's what date is that on? Um, October eleventh, two thousand nineteen. Okay, and what's happening in that photo? Uh, he just got his braces put on. Okay, and let's go down to uh, the next one, which is G. What's the date on G? Um, October thirteenth, two thousand nineteen. What's happening in G? We're apple picking. Okay, so these are just posts of events. There are things you're doing, correct? Correct. Okay, this one is older, it looks like. What's, or maybe not older, but what's the date on this one? No, this is, I'm sorry, I'm on H. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Uh, November 7th, 2019. Okay, and we see um, your son in this picture on the left, correct? Correct. What's going on in this picture? He's on his, um, it's the ninth grade Washington, D.C. trip with the school. Okay, I'm going to go down to I. What's the date on I? Uh, May 23rd, 2020. And what's happening in that picture? Um, we're, can you scroll up a little bit? We're somewhere up north. I don't remember where, but we're on probably a camping vacation. Okay, he doesn't look thrilled to be in the picture. He doesn't like pictures. Okay. Um, let's go down to J. Uh, what's the date of J? Uh, May 23rd, 2020. Who's in this picture? Uh, it's my son and James. Okay. I'm going to go down to K. Is this, this is a post you made? Yes. What date? Um, August 5th, 2020. What are you showing there? Um, the house when we first bought it and the improvements we made so far. Okay. So this is like a comparison before and after? Yes. All right. Uh, L, what's the date on L? August 16th, 2020. Okay, and there's a large black box out. What was What's under the box without saying who it is? His friend. Okay, so where are you guys in this picture? Uh, looks like we're up north. Okay, then we're gonna go to M, and we're on September 28th. I'm sorry, what's the date of this picture? Um, September 28th, 2020. Okay, what's this picture? That's a picture of my son and our horse. Okay, um, I'm going to N. Uh, what date is this? October 23rd, 2020. Okay, and what is this a picture of? Something Ethan drew. Oh, sorry, my son drew. Okay, and why did you include this? Why did you post about that on Facebook? Because I, he's always a really good drawer. He, can, he just draws all the time. And we, got, we got a lot of artists, um, actually tattoo artists in our family, a lot of good drawers. So okay. said it was in his jeans. Okay, that's why you said art is in his jeans. In the jeans. Okay. All right, I'm going to O. Uh, what's the date on this one? Um, October 30th, 2020. Okay, and what's going on here? Uh, we are carving pumpkins for Halloween. And there's a big black box. That's his friend. Okay. Um, I am going down to uh, P. What's the date on that one? Uh, November 21st, 2020. Okay, and who who is around for this picture, even if you can't see them in the picture? Um, it's me and my husband and my parents. We're down in um, Florida uh, over Thanksgiving. And what is this that you're doing? We're playing Dark Tower. Okay. Did you guys play games with Ethan often? Yes. What games did you guys play? We played... Um, Trivia Pursuit, we played What the Mean, we played Yahtzee, um, we played card games, we played a lot of Uno, um, uh, the one with all the dice, Bar Barkle, I think it's called, yeah, Barkle, um, I don't know, we just, we played a lot of games. Okay, I'm going to go down to Exhibit Q, uh, what date's that? Um, that's November 24th, 2020. Okay, and we see, um, who, who's in the picture? Uh, my husband and my son. Okay, exhibit S, what's the date? 
uh, January 22nd, 2021. Okay, what's going on in R? Um, my son and his friend are playing Jenga. Okay. Um, S, do you know the date on S? Um, can you scroll up? It's, for some reason, uh, this one is different. Well, it looks like it says February 25th, 2021. And what's going on here? What's happening in February of 21? Um, they're at a bowling match. Okay. Now, um, let's go down to T. What's the date on T? February 26th, 2021. And what's happening here? Um, my stepdaughter came up and visited from Florida, and that's my son with his arm around her. Okay. And... Um, in with these photos again, are there on your real Facebook profile? Are there more photos, or is it just what we're seeing? There's more. Okay. So, what's the date on this exhibit? You. Um, May fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Okay. And what's the point of this post? There's a couple pictures. That is showing um, our backyard improvements that we've done since we bought the house. Okay. And then. Um, Let's go to V. What's the date on V? Uh, May 16th, 2021. What are you showing here? Our garden. Okay. Now, um, this is W. What's the date on W? May 29th, 2021. Okay, and who's that? Uh, that's my son and Dexter, his kitten. Okay. Um, Dexter is mentioned in one of the tapes. Is that correct? Yes. What? How is Dexter mentioned? Um, when we were at the substation, I asked my son why, and he said, because I just did take care of Dexter for me. So when he said take care of Dexter, he's, he's meaning his kitten. Um, X, what's the date on X? May 29th, 2021. Okay, and what's going on on this, on this date? Um, my son and Dexter are just hanging out in his bed. Okay, we're going to go to Y. What's the date on this one? I'm sorry, I'm just going too fast. May 31st, 2021. Okay, what's who's in this one? My son and his kitten. Okay, um, Z, what's the date on this one? June 13th, 2021. And where are you guys? We're at Cedar Point. Is this like a family trip? Yes. Did you guys do a lot of family trips? Yes. Okay, a lot of family trips during summer of 2021? Yeah. Okay, um, we're here uh, in exhibit uh, AA. What's that? Yikes. I Bumped it. Um, what's the date on this one? Uh, June 26, 2021. What are you showing here? Uh, my garden. Okay. This is exhibit BB. What date? June 27, 2021. Okay. And what are you doing there? In the pool. Did you guys go in the pool with your son often? Yeah. Okay. Come join, come join us. Okay. And then let's see here. We've got CC uh, date. Uh, July 4th, 2021. What's going on here? Um, my son and his friend are playing badminton against my parents. Okay. Is this at your house? Yes. Um, DD, uh, date? July 11th, 2021. Okay, what is this? Um, me and my son and his friend were, we found a little spot off the Pollyann Trail, which runs through Oxford, and there is a weird big boy stuff going on, so we kind of walked around and checked it out. Okay. Um, let's see here. EE. E. It looks like there's two posts on this date. Uh, um, what date is that? That's July 30th, 2021. Okay, and what's happening in these posts? Um, the first one I posted, uh, my son and his friend were both passed out from a lot of hiking we did that day. Okay. What about the next photo from... Those are pictures of the campground that we were at. Okay. And so you took... Is it fair to say you had the front end vacation? Yeah, most of the time. Okay. Um, July 31st, I'm sorry, what's the date on this one? I'm on FF. Um, July 31st, 2021. Okay, what is this? Uh, we went to the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes. Okay, and where it says like plus 29, what does that mean? There's 29 more photos that go along with that. Okay, we're not gonna show them all though, okay? All right, we're going to GG. What's going on here? Uh, what's the date? Uh, August 21st, 2021. What are you guys doing August 21st, 2021? Uh, my son and his friend were putting up a tent in our backyard and doing backyard camping. Okay. What's the next one? Uh, 
You posted this on what date? I posted on August 21st, 2021. Okay, and what's the point of this post? Um, it was a memory from three years ago of my son, his friend, uh, with our horse. And I was pointing out to, um, to, my fr to my son's friend's mom that they were so small three years ago. Okay. Uh, what about this one? What's the date on, let's see here, I, I? Um, August 25th, 2021. Okay, what's this? That's his first day of school. Okay, what grade? Uh, tenth grade. And let's go to JJ. What's this date? Um, August 29th, 2021. Okay, what's going on in this picture? Um, me, and, me and my son were taking a picture for his um, old football coach. Um, the son, I tagged him in it. Um, this is the only picture he would take with me so he could say hi to his coach rope. All right, what about um, date on this one, which is marked as KK? Um, September 6, 2021. And what's going on there? Um, my son's leash training his kitten. Do cats ever walk on a leash? It wasn't successful. Okay. Uh, next picture, LL. What's the date? Um, September 18, 2021. Okay, and what are you doing here? Uh, we rented a house, a houseboat for the weekend, and my husband and I are walking around the outside on the dock and the sneaking pictures of the boys inside the houseboat, houseboat playing card games. Why were you sneaking pictures of them? Because they wouldn't let us take any pictures of them. Okay. Typical teenagers. All right. M.M., -M, um, what's that date? September 18th, 2021. Okay. And what were the photos here? It was, I know it was the houseboat weekend. We went to um, Mackinac City, so I think it was something in Mackinac City. Okay, and then the blacked out box, is that the friend? I think it's the, fr I think it's the friend's parents. The friend's, okay. Oh, the no, friend, but I, oh, never mind. I saw, I, never mind. Okay, NN, what's the date on this one? Um, September 21st, 2021. Okay, and what's this? Uh, my son and Dexter sleeping. And now we are at September 20, I'm sorry, what's the date on this one? I'm on OO. Um, September 26, 2021. Okay. What does that show? Um, we were breaking up our, our side steps of the deck and planning a flower bed in the front of the, in the, front of the house. Okay. So we're in fall of 21, is that fair? Yes. Okay. What's the date on this picture? I'm on PP. October 3rd, 2021. Okay, what's this picture? What are these pictures about? Um, we decorated our house for, for the Halloween. Okay, and then let's go here to QQ. Date? October 9th, 2021. And what's shown in this picture? Our, our front porch that we redid. Okay, called it a makeover? It was. All right, and then let's go here to RR. Uh, what date is that? October 15th, 2021. Okay, and what are you doing there? Uh, I was just showing the, like what we've got so far with the paint job, um, remodeling the living room and dining room, basically. Okay, um, next one is uh, SS. What's the date on this one? October 25th, 2021. Okay, what is this? This was a text I sent to my son. Um, him and my husband were going somewhere, I don't remember. But I was just checking in. I said, you guys are okay. And my son made the comment, no, we're in the back of a white van headed to Alabama. Because he's very sarcastic, and I found it funny, and I posted it. Okay. Um, was he did, he, did was he sarcastic yeah. more? I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Explain the sarcasm. I mean, that's, a, that's an example of it right there. Okay. Um, yeah, he, he was always sarcastic, always messing around with us. Okay, when you say messing around with you, we're gonna we're gonna get that to that when we talk about some other posts. Is that fair? Okay. Okay. So let's go down to this photograph. TT. What is this? What date? That's October 29th, twenty twenty one. Okay. And um, what are you doing? That's where we're on the virtual reality playing Beat Saber. Okay. And then this this one you you. Okay, what's the date on this one? November 26th or 25th, <laughs> 2021. Okay, and what's going on here? Uh, Thanksgiving. Okay, Thanksgiving, <coughs> is this Thanksgiving Day? Yes. So this would have been Thursday. Correct. Okay. We're going to talk more about the next couple of days more slowly, but I'm going to go through the pictures first, okay? And then I'm going to take them off the screen so we can talk a little more. Is that all right? Yeah. 
Okay, so what's the po what is this post? What's the date on this one, VV? Uh, <coughs> November 25th, 2021. And what is this picture? What are these pictures showing? Um, uh, our family, my aunt and uncle, my cousin and her husband, and then me, James, and my son. And okay. it shows us um, playing dice. Okay. Or left, right, center. Is this on Thanksgiving? Yes. All right. And then um, on WW, what day is this on? Uh, that's November 26, 2021. Okay. And what were you guys doing on this day, um, November 26, 2021, which is a day we're going to talk about in more detail? Uh, we're cutting our Christmas tree down. Okay. And then ultimately we have XX. What date is this? November 27th, 2021. Okay. So this would have been uh, Saturday? Yes. And what's going on in this picture? Uh, we got our Christmas decorations and everything out. Okay. Then we have um, YY. What day is this from? November 26, 2021. Okay, and what's happening in this picture? Um, my son and my husband are laughing at me because I dragged them around the whole tree farm to pick the tree. So they were finally happy it was over. Okay, so that's why why right? Right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna close this for just a minute, and um, and just make sure that exhibits B through Y Y were admitted. They're admitted. Okay. Yes. Okay, and then the defense is only going to have one other exhibit, but we'll get to that one. Okay? Okay. So, Mrs. Crumbly, I want to go back and talk to you. We were we went through a lot of Facebook pages, obviously, or pictures. Um, on Thanksgiving, who was at your house? It was my aunt and uncle, my cousin, and her husband. And... What did you guys do, if anything, that night? Well, they were they were there probably to about 7 or 8 o'clock, so we played left, right, center, um, just the normal family, family stuff. Did, did, everything, did anything seem off or strange with your son? No. Was he spending time with family members, or was he in his room? What was he doing? He was back and forth. He would come out and play games with us, or... When it got to adult talk, he would go in his room and play his video games. Now, we definitely saw a lot of his friend in the photographs. Were there other times where he would not have his friend with him? Yeah, there were times. Okay. Um, were there, was he happy? Was he okay without his friend? Was he, how was he? Yeah, I mean, most of the times it was just the three of us. Um, it was usually out of state travel. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Okay, so on the day after Thanksgiving, do you what did you do that day? Um, I went shopping. I go shopping every every year, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday shopping. I wake up about four o'clock and I go shopping. Okay, so where did you go that day if you remember? Um, I usually go to Meyer and then from there I'll head up to Marshall's and Lapeer. Um, and then sometimes I will hit the um, not Home Depot, the other home improvement store. Menards. I would hit Menards. And on that date, um, when you went, it was the 26th, correct? Yes, correct. Um, do you know, when you left your house, did you know what James and uh, Ethan, your son, were going to be doing that day? Uh, no, they were sleeping when I left. Okay, when you got home, were they home or were they at, where were they? They weren't home. Did they ever come home? Yeah, I um, I texted my husband and asked where you're at, and um, I believe he called me and told me that him and Ethan were at the Acme um, uh, firearm store looking at guns. Okay. And then they came home from there. Okay, did they purchase a gun that day? They did. Okay, the prosecution brought in exhibits showing the receipts, all that. You weren't with them when they bought the gun, correct? No, I was not. Okay. You did post on Facebook a photo of the gun. We saw the, the post, correct? Correct. And in the post that's been admitted already, you described it as your son's cr uh, Christmas gift. Um, can you explain who wanted the gun? How, what, what, what was, what does it mean? Um, they had run to the nine millimeter at the shooting range before, so they knew it was the type of gun, or the size gun, I guess what it is, that, um, 
they wanted to get, and my son and my husband did a lot of texting back and forth. My son did a lot of research on it, and they're comparing different ones that they wanted to buy. Um, that, went, that went on for a couple months. Um, my husband just kind of kept blowing it off, like, not, you know, not right now, not right now. And then I guess when I was out shopping, they said, well, let's, let's go try on Black Friday, see if we can get one on sale, or if there's any deals going on. Okay, so they ultimately did get one? Right. Um, now, did you object? Did you say, I don't want that gun in the house? Anything like that? No, I was more angry that they cut into our Christmas tree time. Usually cut my Christmas tree down right after I get back from shopping, but I had to wait for them. So I was, I was irritated at that. When they came home, did they show you the, the gun? Yes. Okay, and what did you guys do? Um, they, they just showed me it was on the kitchen counter, and then um, my husband put it up, and we went to the Christmas tree farm. What do you mean by put it up? He put it back in the case with the cable lock and back in the bedroom. Okay. Let's talk about just guns overall. Um, this jury needs to understand some, some details, okay? If I ask a question you don't know what I'm talking about, let me know. Because okay. are guns your thing? Not really, no. Okay. But do you have awareness about guns within your home? I do. Okay. Who is responsible for storing the gun? My husband is. Okay, explain why you say he's responsible for that role. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable being in charge of that. It was more his thing, so I let him handle that. I didn't feel comfortable putting the lock thing on it. Um, I just, I just rather, just rather not let him do it. And I think in one of the messages that was admitted with Brian, you called it a string lock. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand now it's a cable lock? I do. Okay. So were there ever any times where you would take the cable lock off or put it on? No. Now, the, there were, prior to buying that gun, did you, did James own any other guns? He did. How many? Two. And by two, the jury has seen the uh, Derringer and the Caltech. Were those the other two? Correct. Okay. So those are the other two guns. How were those stored? Uh, they were stored in a safe. Okay. And was that different than the nine millimeter? It was. Okay, explain to the jury the difference. Um, we, we had a gun safe, so when they bought the, the two other guns, they transported the two other guns into the gun safe. Um, and then everything else, well, I don't know. The, everything went, like the cable lock and the other case went somewhere. Um, the 9 millimeter was in a case, but it was locked in the, it was in the case locked with a cable lock. Okay, and how... The cable lock that was on the 9 millimeter. what did you have to use to get the cable lock open? A key. Okay, did you keep, did you have possession of the key? No. Okay, where was the key? It was, I collected German beer steins, so it was in one of the beer steins. Where are those located? Uh, throughout the house. We have them on top of the, there's a, a ledge over the refrigerator in our kitchen, um, so they go from wall to wall. Then we had corner shelves in our house that had them. Um, we had a lot. Okay. Did did you know which particular beer stein the cable lock key was in? No. Do you know if your son knew which beer stein it was in? Um, no. What about ammunition for the 9mm? Was there any bought on the 26th when the weapon was purchased? No. Okay. So that day um, we saw... Obviously, your Facebook post, um, you describe it as your son's gift. Did he have free access to that gun? No, it, it was for him to use at the shooting range only. Was he allowed to take it out? Not without my husband around. Did he know where it was kept? My husband hid it, usually in our bedroom in different spots. Okay. What was the intention of hiding it? That's just what you're supposed to do. Okay. And when it was hidden, did was it locked in any way? It had the, the cable lock on it. Okay. And you again testified about the key being in a beer stein? Correct. Would the beer stein be right by the cable lock? Or? No. Okay. So where would the beer stein be? It would probably be in one of the ones in the kitchen. Okay. So the key's out there, um, and then you've got the... Did you know where the gun was hidden in your room? on um, November 26th when he put it away? No. Okay, on November 27th, 
Um, we saw the whole video of you going to the shooting range with Ethan, correct? correct. Or with your son, correct? Correct. Okay, on that day, we see it in the video that you carry the gun case into the gun range, right? Correct. Okay, how did the gun get into the get to the gun range? Um, it, well, my husband had got it ready for me and put it in the back of my car. And what I does that mean, got it ready for Took you? the cable lock off, put, um, I guess I put the, the magazine things in the case and put it in the back of my car. And then I drove um, with my son to the shooting range with the gun in the back of my car. That's how I got there. Okay. Did you, um, did you see him or watch him take the cable lock off that day? No. Why not? I think I was just doing something else. I didn't pay attention. Okay, so when you got to the gun range, we saw in the video you carry it in, carry it to the counter. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay, the jury's seen all this, five bullets, and then you guys go shooting, correct? Correct. Okay, we obviously see you and your son. That shows the whole experience while you're there. Correct. Okay, um, so after, while you're there, um, how interested were you in in shooting that weapon? Um, I I shot it a couple times. I don't know, shooting's kind of boring. I'm more like skeet shooting, where actually something's going on. So I shot it a couple times and he did the rest. Okay, and um, did you end up posting something about it being a mother's Sunday? I did. How did you feel about that day? I felt, I mean, it was it was a fun day. He asked me if I wanted to go to the shooting range with him, and he's never asked me, just me, to go before. My husband was um, doing DoorDash, and I, I felt good about it. How many times had you been to the shooting range before that day? Once. And when you went the one other time, uh, who else was present? Uh, my husband. So this was the first day you're the only adult going? Correct. Okay, so at, we see obviously in the video you carry the gun in the case out, did it have the cable lock on at that point? No. Okay, so what did you do from there? Um, this is when we're leaving? Yeah. Um, I put the gun in the back of my vehicle and drove. Where, explain where in the back of your oh, vehicle. So I, in the back of the SUV, it has a little uh, thing that opens up where the spare tire is. I put it under there. Okay, and then where did you go? I uh, went home. And did you take the gun in the house? No, I took the bullets in the house and hit them, and my husband... Uh, took the gun in the house when he got home from work. Okay, so was there a period of time that the gun was not in the home, but in your car? Yeah, probably for a couple hours. Okay, why is that? I just, I just don't feel comfortable with it. I don't, I don't, that's his thing. Okay, so on that Saturday, um, it was left in the vehicle, and your vehicle was locked. Correct. Do you know if the gun was brought into the house and put away? Yes. Okay, how do you know that? Uh, my husband told me. Okay. Yep. Did you did you um, watch him do anything in terms of putting it away, or if you were if you didn't, just let me know. No, I didn't. Okay. The next day is Sunday, correct? Correct. And on that day, um, was there any? Do you recall any issues with the weapon? Any issues with the gun? No. Okay. Um, now when. The next day is Monday, is that right? Correct. Okay, what did you do on Monday? I went to work. Okay, and on Monday, we heard the voicemail you got. Is that is that accurate? Yes. Describe for the jury overall what happened or what you were dealing with that day. Um, I received a voicemail on my phone while I was at work. It was Pam Fine, um, the school, one of the school counselors, uh, calling to let me know that my son was looking at bullets in class. Um, she let us know, let me know that um, they had a meeting with my son and that he said what he was doing was wrong, admitted responsibility. Um, they gave him an example about teachers, even they, they, they brew beer at home, she'd be looking at it up in school. And it was there, it was, was kind of upbeat. And then she ended up with, um, you know, he understood, he went back to class, just wanted to let you know. If you have any questions, please give us a call. Have a good holiday. Okay. And on that date, did you call Miss Fine back? No, I did not. What was your reaction to getting that message? Um, I mean, it was pretty, pretty black and white. I mean, she said what happened. They seemed like they solved the problem, and I didn't have any questions. Okay. So on that date, um, did you end up saying anything to James about it? I believe I did. Did you say anything to your son about it? I did. What did you, and I think we saw text messages 
You said don't get next time don't get caught. Yeah, I said seriously looking up um, bullets in school, and then he went through a long couple of texts about teachers looking at his stuff, and he was worried about who's going to get in trouble. And then I said, um, next time don't get caught. What did you mean by that? Um, so there's a an ongoing thing in her house. I would might someone always asked me the trouble I'd get in high school because I was a little bit of a troublemaker because I always got caught. Like all my friends could be doing the same thing, and I'd be the one to get caught. So I was kind of referencing to that. Okay. So you said that, um, and did you feel you had to discipline him or do anything beyond talk to him about it? No, we talked. I wouldn't listen to the voicemail, and that was that. Okay. Now, on, um, I'm going to go back for a couple minutes to talk to you about some exhibits the prosecution introduced from earlier in the year, Okay. okay. So I'm going to start with um, what's been admitted as Exhibits 155 through 160, okay? I'm going to pop them up on the screen, and we're going to just talk about each one briefly. So I'm going to go to 155. Okay, plug my... Mm. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not hard <coughs> to plug it in. Okay. So I'm going to start with 155, okay? This was already admitted, so we're not going to belabor this, okay? Oh, no, she doesn't have a picture of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's not necessarily the bulbous ones that come in. Oh. Okay. There, there it is. is. Okay. So we've already <coughs> talked about this with other witnesses, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. If you need me to slow down, let me know. Okay. Okay. This is um, Ms. DeRiker's email with her and Sean Hopkins. She's telling him, um, when you get a chance, can you call uh, your son down, to the, down and see how he's doing? He's failing my class, tries to sleep all the time in class. Sean responds, I'll catch him by the end of the day. Thanks, just a little worried. And, um, and that's that. You heard testimony about that, correct? Correct. Were you ever aware there was a time where your son was failing a class and trying to sleep all, all in capital letters, all the time in class. I can't remember what class the record was, um, so I'd probably be aware if he was failing that class from power school, but I was not aware that he was sleeping all the time. So did anyone from the school let you know in May of 2021, hey, he's sleeping in class and failing? No. Okay, that was exhibit 155. Um, and would that show up on power schools, that, the emails between that? <clears throat> no. Okay, Exhibit 166. This is from September 8th, 2021. Um, it starts off with an email from Miss McConnell to Sean Hopkins. It says, can you please touch base with Ethan Crumbly? In his autobiography poem, he said he feels terrible and that his family is a mistake. Unusual responses for sure. He writes back, thanks for the heads up. I'm in senior meetings throughout the day. I'll try to catch up with him. Were you aware this was ever a discussion or an issue? No. Were you aware that Mr. Hopkins ever talked to or tried to talk to your son? No. Did anyone ever call you to make you aware of any of this? No. If you heard this, um, how, would you, how would you react or what would your reaction be? Um, I'd be definitely concerned why he feels like his family's a mistake and he feels terrible. So that would be that would be a concern to me. Okay. So you this is something you were unaware of. Correct. And in fact, when did you find out these emails existed? Uh, when we started getting discovery. Okay, so in this case. Correct. All right, so I want to go to one uh, 157. This is on November 10th of 2021. Um, this is uh, Miss McConnell sends Sean a message. Ethan Crumbly is having a rough time right now. We may need to speak with you. Um, Sean writes back, I'm sorry I was in a meeting through the end of the day. I'll catch up with him. Um, were you ever made aware that there was some issue on November 10th where your son was having a rough time? No. Did anyone from the school ever let you know? No. Did you ever see anything like this um, prior to us getting materials in this case? No. If you heard um, your son was having a rough time, what would you do to follow up? I would talk to my son, find out what's going on. Okay. And I am going to 
minimize these for one second. I want to go back to um, some other dates that were discussed and exhibits were admitted. And I'm going to go back to March 20th. I'm sorry. Let's start. We'll go in order. So March 16th of 2021, um, the prosecution has admitted exhibits 85, 86, 85 through 94, and um, let's see here. 85 shows you guys are making plans, and you say, I'm going to get drunk and ride my horse. Can you explain to the jury what you meant by that? And I'll get it up on the screen. Um, I was going to have some drinks and ride my horse. It was St. Patrick's Day. Um, I'm sorry, that's on this. That's on the 17th, Correct. right? Yeah. Okay, the 16th, though. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Okay, so explain that again. So let me get it up on the screen, because I'm messing up. Okay, 85. Okay, so 85, um, I'm sorry, you're right. So on page 85, 432 is the page number. You write, I'm going to get drunk and ride my horse. What was your plan that night? Um, I was going to have a couple of drinks and go for a trail ride with my horse. Okay, did you do that that night? Uh, yes. And on um, people's proposed exhibit uh, 86, or their admitted exhibit, this was a text thread between you and your son. Um, let's see here. This is a text where the prosecution uh, admitted to show that your son texted you, okay, the house is now haunted. What time was that text at? Um, it says 6.03. Okay. I don't know if it says minus four. I don't know what that means. Okay, and then um, the next text, some weird shit just happens and now I'm scared. Next one, I got some videos and a picture of the demon is throwing bowls. I'm not joking, it fucked up the kitchen. I'm just going to be an outsider for a while. Can you at least text back? Okay, do you recall this day on March 17th, 2021? <clears throat> It didn't stick out to me until this whole. No, I don't. I, I don't recall it exactly. I just remember it ever since we got discovery on this case. Okay, so on um, March seventeenth, um, there was a point um, when you did you ever see these texts? I probably didn't. Not that time. Do you recall seeing these texts at any point prior to this case? I'm sure I did, but they didn't, they weren't, no, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure I saw them, but they just didn't stick out to me until this case. Why didn't they stick out to you? Because it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was anything serious. It was um, Ethan just messing around. you got to explain to the jury, how did Ethan mess around? Um, so... He's been convinced our house has been haunted since 2015. It was built in 1920. Um, around that time frame, him and his friend would go down to the basement and play a Ouija board. So they thought we had a house ghost. Um, so it was around that time when he would mess with us that things were going on in the house. Uh, silverware was flying across the room. Um, doors were slamming. He actually took a video of the door and showed me when I got home, and you can clearly see where he's standing back with his phone, looking at the door that's open. You can see him walk up the door, and you can kind of see him slam it, and him trying to say, see, our house is haunted. So it was that kind of stuff that he, he did. Okay, and did that continue on into 2021 when you'd get messages like this? Um, only a couple of times, but I think it just kind of, he just got over it. Like, it wasn't... He got bored with messing around with the, with the, with the ghost. So. Did you mess around with him? Yes. Okay, what did you do to him? Um, when they were downstairs in the basement playing Ouija board one night, I went and flipped the circuit breaker off in the house, and he thought it was the ghost they conjured up on the Ouija board. Did James ever mess around with you or with Ethan? Um, yeah, a little bit. Give us an example of what he did. Um, he said a lamp fell off a ledge in the basement, and so he named the ghost Victoria, so he was convinced there was another house 
house ghost. So just kind of like an ongoing, like our house ghost, we called it. My son named it Boris Johnson. My husband named it Victoria. It was just, just kind of, it was just a little phase. Was there ever a time where James pretended he got electrocuted? Yes. What did he do? Um, we were remodeling our living room, and he was taking the old ceiling fan down and having to figure out what wires go where to the new ceiling fan. And as he was reaching up, he pretended to get electrocuted, and he fell on the ground and was shaking. And I ran up, and I kicked him. I don't know why I kicked him, but I did. And then he stopped, and I realized he was joking, and my son had the phone recording the whole time. So this kind of stuff between you, your son, and your husband was like typical joking around kind of stuff. It was. Okay, so did you, when you look back at these texts now, and you see that there's a demon throwing bowls and things like that, now looking back, do you think, oh my gosh, he had mental issues? No. What do you think was going on? Just what I said, that it was just him messing around. It only he only, he only did it when we weren't at home, and it was for a short period of time, and then I think he got bored. Okay. So on that date, the prosecution admitted all kinds of stuff to show you were with your horrors, mm -hmm. and James was with your horrors, correct? Correct. And you guys were with your horrors? Correct. How long would you have been out there? What was a typical trip to the barn? Um, usually about three hours. It takes about a half hour to get the horses tacked up and ready. Um, we usually rode for about an hour, and then anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes to cool them down. And um, with respect to the horses, did you and James go out there? Did you go every day? No. How did that work? Who went? How did you guys pick? Um, whoever felt like going or had the most availability. Sometimes I'd work late, you know, past 6 o'clock um, at night. I couldn't go. Um, There's nights that my son had to go to bowling um, that had taken him. It just, how, whatever happened that day, we just say, I'm going or you're going or it just was a day-by-day -day thing. Okay. So... I'm going to skip ahead. This has been admitted as Exhibit 84. This goes to March 8th and 9th. Okay, do you remember talking about those dates? I think so, yeah. Okay. Now, on those dates, the prosecution admitted Exhibit 84, which is up on the screen. These are texts between um, James and you, and it looks like you're saying you're going to have to skip the barn tonight. Do you recall that? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. And then um, you ask, is Ethan going to bowling? Correct. Um, James says IDK. What does that mean? I don't know. All right. And you ask him about that. Okay. And I want you to describe what are you doing in these text messages up on the screen here? These four in a row. Can you go back to the green one? Yeah. Okay. Um, here, I'm sorry. That's no, fine. I got it now. I was just texting him asking him if he was home from school yet. Okay. And if he had his phone on him. So you're texting. I, th I think looking at this, we must have gotten into an argument about his grades and took his phone away the night before, which is why I was asking if he had his phone on him. Is it common for you to text repeatedly about someone? Are you home? Where yeah. are you? Yes. Okay. So in your messages, is that is it fair to say you're, we're going to see that a lot from you? Yes. Okay. Um... Your husband wrote back, he does not get home till 3.16. Did you know what time Ethan got home every day? I knew it was after 3, like shortly after. I wasn't sure to the minute. Okay, well then you wrote, I want, I told you to pick him up because he's upset and I don't want him to do anything stupid, God damn it. What did you mean by that? Um, I don't know, just if he, I wanted him, if he walked home, I was worried if like he was upset, he would just walk to Little Caesars or Frosty Boy and not let us know and then I'd worry or he'd take the he'd take the route through there's like um some kind of woodsy area to get the trail to our house and there's some homeless people that live back in there. It was just more or less I was just worried about him just not wanting to come home because we got we got an argument the night before. So when you say I I don't want him to do anything stupid, were you worried he'd hurt himself or anything like that? No. And your James responds, dude, chill, he is fine, and I am trying to fucking work. Your next question, does he have his phone? Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, and then he says he won't answer while he's walking. The exhibit speaks for itself. And then you start up with, I'm seriously freaking out. Is he home yet? And then it looks like a blank message. Yeah. Why are you freaking out so much? Because he didn't tell me he was home. 
So, and I think he must have, I don't know, did something with work. I couldn't get a hold of him. So it was like, why can't I get a hold of you? Why, why can't I get a hold of anybody? Okay. Did this concern you um, ultimately that something happened that day or did this get resolved? I think he just got home and that was it. Okay. Now, the next day, um, which would have been the 9th, you and James, we can agree, went to the barn together that day, correct? Correct. They, the prosecution provided a picture, GPS um, exhibits, uh, phone data exhibits, correct? Correct. All right. On that day, we agree you guys are at the barn together. Correct. Okay. I'm going to go to the prosecutor's exhibit 82 that was uh, admitted. Okay. And you text, you send him a message to Ethan that says, where are you? Or Ethan sends you a message that says, I'm sorry. You send a message to Ethan saying, where are you? At 317 and 32 seconds, UTC minus five, correct? Correct. All right. So then Ethan sends you all these texts. Can you get home now? I think that someone's in the house. Someone walked into the bathroom and flushed the toilet, left the light on. I thought it was you, but I came out no one was home. There is no one in the house, though. Dude, my door just slammed. Maybe it's just my paranoia. But when are you going to get home? Okay, what what was going on that day? Um, so if you go back to go back to the beginning of the thread. Okay. Is it the beginning? So you can see uh, the time on there. That was the time I'd be driving home from the barn. And when I got home, he was asking me why I didn't answer the text, and he said the, how, the weird stuff was going on in the house again, and that was that. Okay, when you walked in, do you recall discussing these messages with him? Um, it was mainly, I've been trying to text you, why didn't you answer? And I told he him, said that, or you said that? He said that. Okay. And I, and I told him I was driving home, I wasn't looking at my phone. So what's, why weren't you looking at your phone, or what's going on with your... Did you have a signal? Do you not have a signal? What's happening? I, I could have had a signal. I don't know. I probably just had my phone in the front seat of the passenger side and didn't look at it. Okay. Um, when you're out at the barn, do you get every text that people send you? No. What's your signal like out there? Um, I have Metro PCS, so it's not as good as somebody had AT&T and Verizon, but there's very limited spots um, at any barn I've been at where there's any type of signal. Usually you have to find the one... The one spot you'll see everybody standing at talking on the phone, but it's not its not all over the barn. What about on the roads to the barn? Um, so that barn we were at, it was between Oxford and um, uh, Groveland area. So all those roads, once I passed the market, it's all, its there's no signal. Unless I, until I got up to a fire station, then I have a signal. And then once I pass the fire station, I wouldn't have a signal. Then I hit a grocery store, I'd have a signal. Once I got past the grocery store, all the way to the barn, I had no signal. Looking back on these texts now from March 9th, okay, seeing him say, there's someone in the house, I think. Someone walked in the bathroom and flushed the toilet, left the light on. Do you think he was having mental issues that day? No. How, what do you think, What what is your conclusion about these messages at this time? He was just messing with us. Okay. Is this the kind of messing you previously talked about? Yes. All right, I want to go to March 20th. Um, this is People's Exhibits uh, 96 through 100. Um, they established on the state you're out at the barn. This is you, yes? Yes. Okay, and um, another picture of you. Yep. And we've got data showing that you were out there, correct? correct. And there's a text message exchange that was admitted as People's 96. I'm going to put that up on the screen for you, okay? Okay. So in People's 96, this is between you and your son, correct? Correct. Um, he says, can you at least text back? You're asking, where's your dad? Text me when you're done. Done yet? And he starts up with, I just, I finished picking up the room. I cleaned until clothes started flying off the shelf. This stuff only happens when I'm home alone. I pick the clothes back up, though. That's at, um, it looks like 2.34, uh, and we may be off by an hour or so because it's that UTC. This one's minus 4. Um, your next text is jumping in shower, text your dad if I don't respond. 
in your text, no matter what the time zone is, is six hours later. Well, Do you recall getting these texts it's two or days, messages? It's two days and six hours later. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Two days and six hours. So do you recall, though, getting these couple on the 20th about, I finished picking up the room, I cleaned until clothes started falling off the shelf. Do you recall that? Only when we got discovery. Okay. Now, looking back on these days, are you thinking, oh, my God, there were, he thought things were happening that were crazy? No. Did you think any, do you think anything of it now? No. What do you think is happening in those, in those messages? I just think he was messing with us. Okay, so those are three times where um, you guys are at the ranch and he's messing with you. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Um, and at that time, um, that was months and months before November. That's, it was in March, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Okay, so beyond March, um, did was there other times where he was saying these goofy texts and messing around? No, I don't think so. So there's there's two more um, dates I need to ask you about. I'm going to go to April 4th, um, which was a Sunday, and that is going to be um, exhibit that was admitted 101, okay? So Exhibit 101 are text messages, and these are between, who are these between? Those were uh, between my son and his friend. Okay. Now, prior to this case, did you ever see any of these messages? I did not. Were you aware any of them existed? I was not. Okay, so this is from April, April 4th, and your son's saying, he's the one tech, sending messages that say, I hear people talking to me and someone in the distance. I actually asked my dad to take me to the doctor yesterday, but he gave me some pills and told me to suck it up. Like, it's at the point I'm asking to go to the doctor. Was there ever a time where he asked to go to the doctor around this time? I don't think so, no. Then he says, my mom laughed when I told her. Was there ever a time where he's asking for help and you're laughing? No. He writes to his friend, and this is just later that night, but I'm having bad insomnia and paranoia, and I need help. I was thinking of calling 911 so I could go to the hospital, but then my parents would be really pissed. Okay, so this is all one long conversation. Is that right? Correct. He says, I'm going to ask my parents to go to the doctors tomorrow or Tuesday again. But this time I'm going to tell them about the voices. This text message or instant message thread, did you ever, were you even aware of this? No. Do you remember any time where he came and talked to you and said anything about hearing voices? No. Do you recall there ever being a time where he asked you for go to go to a doctor or to get help and you said no? No. Or laughed at him? No. So when you see these texts with his friend, um, do you have any idea, and if you don't, that's fine, do you have any idea what he's doing with his friend? I, I don't have any idea. Okay. Do you know if him and his friend messed around with each other like you and your husband do Speculation with him? Judge. If, I'm sorry. If you have to have personal knowledge. Um... You were, when you were testifying earlier, you mentioned that your son and his friend would play within a Ouija board. Is that right? Right. Is, when did that happen or in relation to um, 2021? Um, I know he got the Ouija board for Christmas of 2020. Um, so for a few months after that, they were really into playing it, and then they got bored with it. It's probably sitting on our shelf getting dust. Okay. Um, on April 29th, I'm going to turn your attention to that day. Um, do you recall texting his friend's mother? And I'm going to put up Exhibit 104 on the screen. Okay. Do these texts look familiar to you? They do. Okay. Who are these between? These are between uh, me and his friend's mom. 
Okay. And you say, you start off with, Ethan is, I'm sorry, the, he, my son is in bullying tonight. I just want to let you know, not sure if he needs a partner. Why are you texting that? Um, I don't know why he wasn't bullying tonight, off the top of my head, um, but I, but they have partners on certain nights of the week, and so him and his friend were always partners, so I was letting her know that he wasn't going to be there. Okay, and this is on one date, April 29th. Did you talk to her on other dates, or is this like the only time you talk to her? We, we've talked back and forth quite a bit. Okay. Now, on this date, you say he's been acting kind of depressed. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if there's something bothering him at school, but he doesn't really feel good. I can't get anything out of him. Um, she, Friend's mom mentions he stayed home from school today, too. The only time they're happy is when they're together. Um talking about grades you went mentioned this is all new to me i'm not used to my son being moody he's usually pretty happy and we'll talk about anything i do know he's been stressed about school and his grades um we called the school but she wasn't in social do it tomorrow i think his grades have a lot to do with it i just got to a point where he's got so far behind and we were out of town he's having difficulties making it up where were you guys out of town um in Florida, my, my uh, mother-in-law had passed away, so we were gone for a couple of weeks in the middle of April taking care of funeral arrangements and everything. And at this time, when you describe your son as being moody or depressed, did you think it was anything that warranted getting medical attention? No, he was just being quieter. He's, he's a quiet kid. He was just being quieter than normal. Um, and I'd ask him if everything was okay. He'd say fine, but I just tell he was a little sad, and I thought maybe... Um, him and his, I didn't see his friend in a, in a couple of weeks, and I don't know if maybe they got into a fight and they weren't talking. Um, so I was asking her if there was anything going on with his, his friend, which might have caused my son to be quieter than normal, but I think he was just really stressed out because those two weeks that we were in Florida, he got pretty far behind on his grades. Okay, so then it goes on and you end up saying, yeah, me too, I'm glad they're getting along, and it wasn't an issue with those two as to why he was being depressed. The online school is horrible. I've given up two. I told him just to do his best. Don't worry about it. Next year is a new year. And then maybe if his friend is feeling better, he wants to come over to work, and then you're talking, talking, talking about shooting up a gun range in the backyard, correct? Yeah, targets. Okay, so did this issue of him feeling depressed or acting moody, this one, this one period of time, did that go on or did that discontinue? It discontinued. I mean, it was like it was a little phase. Um, and he seemed to be fine. Him and his friends started coming over more. I think it was more or less his friend wasn't coming over as much, and he just seemed quieter than normal. And you guys were out of town. You had just been out of town, for right? You. Yeah, and he just lost his grandmother, so that was that was sad too. Okay. All right, and then there was one other conversation that you had with um, with his friend's mother that the prosecution introduced as Exhibit One Hundred Five. I'm going to put that up, okay? So this is actually from, uh, let's see here, starts off on, um, I'm going to go to Halloween, so 1031 of 21. You say to her, James filled me in on his friend last night. I'm so sorry you guys are having to make such a hard decision. Please let me know if you need anything. What was that about? Um, we had found out the day before think, or Halloween um, that his son, or their, my son's friend, my son's friend, went to Wisconsin to an OCD treatment school. Um, we didn't, we didn't know. We had Halloween plans, um, and we were texting with his parents, his friend's parents, about is his friends still coming over the car of pumpkins and Halloween because they do it every year and then um, they go out and trick or treat and we didn't hear from him and all of a sudden we got a, my my husband found out through his friend's dad that they drove to Wisconsin and, and he's at an OCD treatment center for at least 90 days so it hit us really hard because we didn't really expect it coming um, he didn't expect it coming it was just it was it was hard did you do anything different as a parent when his friend was um, taken away, essentially, to the hospital or the other school? I don't understand. Um, did you do anything um, different as a parent in terms of spending time with your son? I mean, we did as much as we could. Okay. Um, Tell us about that. Tell us about that month. I think we did more family game nights than normal. Um, 
he was working a lot. I would check in with him, you know, make sure he's he's doing okay. And that's when I started asking him, um, do you have friends at school that you can you can hang out with? And if so, you're more than welcome to invite him over. Um, okay, I was just more I was more on point of the fact that he was he was sad. Okay, and even though he was sad, did you feel like there was anything where he needed help or needed mental health treatment? No. Was there, was his loss of his friend being in his life um, anything that made you think he needed counseling or a therapist? Not to that extent, no. I'm going to unplug this so that we can go back to some questions, go to questions that don't involve exhibits, okay? Okay. Um, so we were we were talking earlier about the mother son gun range day, right? Correct. You've already told the jury how the gun was put in the car and taken out. Okay. Now, did you ever tell Brian Maloche about the mother son day at the range? I'm sure I mentioned it. Yeah. Did you ever tell Brian that the gun was in your vehicle? Yes. Okay, when did you tell Brian that the gun was in your vehicle? <laughs> On the day I went to the shooting range. Did you tell Brian you put the gun in your car the day the shooting happened? No. So when he testified to that, was that accurate? No, I think he was confused. Okay. Did you specifically tell him about the gun being put in your car that other time? Yes. Aside from that time that you drove to the range, was the gun ever in your car? No. Um, were you aware Brian had memory issues? Uh, no, I was not. Brian testified that he never met Ethan. Later in his testimony, he said he did. Did he ever meet Ethan? Yeah, a couple times at the barn. Okay. And we went... Um, he came to our house, he helped deliver a big TV that we got, and, and my son was there. Well, did you ever tell Brian anything about your son saying things or making you upset in any way like that? No. Did you ever tell Brian anything about he had mental health issues that you were worried about? No. So when we read your messages, which the prosecution admitted, the, very, the 77 pages, okay, it's fair to say the jury can read what you guys talked about and you reflect on all the, you, you talk about the past with Ethan, correct? Correct. Okay, so the jury can read those. We don't need to go through those. You agree? I agree. Okay. Um, so we talked, we got to Monday, we got, to, Monday is um, two days after you guys go for the mother Sunday at the shooting range. Monday, Miss Fine leaves you the voicemail. We talked about that already. We talked about you talking to, to your son about it, right? Okay, I want to go to Tuesday uh, the 30th, okay? Okay. Do you remember Tuesday the 30th? I do. And that day, we saw an exhibit of you going into work. That happened? Yes. And we heard lots of testimony already about you getting a call from Sean Hopkins. Correct. He left me a voicemail and I called him back. Okay. When you got the when you called back, um, Mr. Hopkins testified that um, he sent you something. What did he send you? Um, he sent me a copy of a math worksheet that had the scribbled out drawings on it. Okay. And I want to ask you: the night before that scribbled out drawing um, thing came to you. Um, did you have any interactions with your son? Yes, we did. What were those about? Um, I saw in power school that he had an E in geometry. So we got an argument again about his grades. Um, we took his phone away and told him that he couldn't go to the shooting range until his grades, his grades were brought back up. Okay, so, so you guys had this argument the night before. I, we saw lots of messages where you thought everything was fine that Tuesday morning. Is that how you felt? Yeah. Okay. So when you got that, when you got that math paper texted to you, do you recall saying anything to Ethan on the phone, on speaker? Yeah, I asked him why he did, why, why he did that. 
Okay, what were you thinking at that point? Um, I was actually, I was actually kind of angry because I thought he was, he did that in like defiance of us yelling him about missing assignments, and here he is drawing pictures on an empty assignment page in geometry. So you felt like it was specific, we him sending you a message about the night before. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say you took it personally? Yeah, I did. Okay, so what did you do? Um, I had asked um, Mr. Hopkins to if he had the original, and then he sent it to my email, which then I opened up and looked at it, and it's like, okay. What did this, you think when you saw that? I was a little concerned. Um, I was I was pretty concerned. He had asked um, for a parent to come to the school to meet with them, and at this time I tried calling my husband to see if he could go because he was out in the area. Uh, working and I couldn't get a hold of him, so I decided to go to the school. On the way to the school, um, he finally called me back and he met me at the school, so we went together. Okay, and when you went into the school, what did you think was happening? Um, I thought he was gonna get in trouble for what he drew on his assignment. I thought I was gonna get like suspended. Um, I was expecting like a disciplinary meeting. Okay, how did you feel about what you saw on that paper? Um, I felt, con I, I felt concerned after seeing that. Okay. And so we saw um, that you sent pictures of the math papers to Kira, to, to Andy, uh, to Brian. You, it's fair to say you sent them around to people. I did. Okay. And to all those people, we've already seen all the exhibits. Um, you expressed that concern. That's correct. Okay. So what happens when you get to the school with, and you and James arrive separately, I think, the detective test testified that he was wrong at first thinking you went together, but you guys were separate, got there at the same time. Correct. Went in. What What was it like walking into the meeting with Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Ejack? Who was there? Um, so when we first got there, Mr. Hopkins met us out um, in front of the where the administration is and walked us back to uh, his counseling office. Uh, when we walked in, it was just him, and then my son was sitting in a chair in front of his desk, um, working on something on his laptop. So when he walked in, he kind of showed us where to sit, and then um, we shook hands, he introduced himself, and started the meeting. Did Did you try to hug Ethan or do anything like that? I didn't. Okay. And when? Um, how did that meeting go? Um. It, it was pretty. It was pretty nonchalant. It was pretty brief. Um, he started to tell. He, he basically filled me in on what my son and him were talking about for the last hour and a half. Um, he said that my son told him that he was feeling sad over the death of a dog that we had, um, my mother-in-law, the loss of his friend. Um, so we talked. We talked a little bit about that. We con we confirmed it. Um, we just said some, is, we agreed it was hard on him. Um, he told us that. He didn't feel um, my son was a risk and actually gave him the option um, if he wanted to stay at school or go home. My son wanted to stay at school, so we all discussed, we all discussed that. Um, Did you feel like you were taking the position of, I am leaving him at school whether he can be here or not? No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, were you surprised or were you not surprised? Did you have any feelings about whether or not he could stay at school? Um... I didn't really, I, I thought the advice that they were giving us was the, a good advice. We, we talked about him being sad, and then um, he said being around peers usually helps. So we all agreed to that. Um, my son gets very stressed out when he does virtual school, so we agreed that it might stress him out more to do his <coughs> school remotely the rest of the day. Um, but there was never a time where I would refuse to take him home. I could easily... If he wanted to go, take him with me. I had no issues with that. Okay, so ultimately, um, did you take the paper, a paper from the school? The counseling papers, yeah. Okay. There is a like a stack, um, like maybe ten sheets with multiple counselors listed on them. Okay. And um, were you planning to make do anything with that sheet? Um, yeah, actually, we were going to start. I gave it to my husband out in the parking lot, and I told him I had phone calls at work the rest of the day, so I told him to start making calls. Um, once he got done doing his DoorDash. Okay, now the prosecution introduced and admitted um, an exhibit which was a search off of Yahoo about clinical depression um, 
treatments. Do you recall ever Google, well, I'm saying Googling, but do you recur, recall ever searching that, that topic? I don't, and I don't usually use Yahoo as a search engine. I always use Google, so I don't know. I don't, I don't recall it, no. Okay. Do you recall how, it, how or if you ever saw anything um, on, on Yahoo about clinical depression? I don't remember specifically seeing anything. Um, I might have looked at something when my husband was going through a really hard time. After his mother passed away, he was... Um, he, he was drinking a little bit more than usual, and you just tell that he, he, was just, he wasn't right. So I might have looked at something at that time, seeing if he was depressed, but not, I, I don't know where Yahoo came from. You don't know how the Yahoo came to no. be? Okay. When you're on Facebook and Instagram and all those things, do you ever hit the clickbait stuff? Um, it, sometimes on accident. Sometimes I do on purpose. Okay, so that search on Yahoo, you don't remember ever putting that in the search bar? No. Okay. Um, but you are saying it's possible you looked at it, is that? It's possible. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go back. So you're at the meeting. How did the meeting end? Um, so we all decided that Ethan was, or my son was going to go back to his class. So we wrote a pass to go back to class. Um, after he left, we... All four of us were in the meeting, and we kind of he asked, they asked if we had any questions, and we did not. And then I said, "I'm going to go back to work," and we left, and I went to work, and my husband did DoorDash. And did you mean to be abrupt about ending the meeting? I didn't think I was abrupt. Did you think you ended the meeting? I think it just automatically ended when they asked if we had any questions, and I said no. Okay. Um, so when there was testimony about that. Um, I'm sorry, strike that. Let me ask Ms. Smith, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm looking for a natural break. We could do it now. But does Jerry need a break? Yeah, I, yeah, that's fine. I'm trying to just want to be considerate. No, we can go anytime. That's fine. Okay, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you. You're not. You're fine. That's fine. So can you take a break until about five after three? Second. All right, for the jury.